Thanks for joining me for another video. My name is Sean and I'm a registered dietitian. Today we will be doing another video on TPN. Before we can get started, this video's sponsor is Fin Crisps. These are delicious caraway crackers. This is what they look like. If you're a fan of rye bread, these things are delicious. So definitely a dietitian approved snack. In this video on TPN, we are going to be talking about fats and proteins. So fat and proteins. If you remember from the previous video, we talked about dextrose. I'll put a link in the description below if you've missed that video. But real quick, let's do a recap. Dextrose. Dextrose is a simple sugar. Unlike most sugars, dextrose is 3.4 kcals per gram. 3.4 per gram kcals. And you'll see it written as D5 or D10 or D20 or D25. And that 5, what that means is that's a percent. So 5% dextrose or 5 grams per 100 mils. So whatever this number is here, that's how many grams per 100 mils. So if they're getting a liter, they'd be getting 50 grams of dextrose. You can multiply that by 3.4 and you'll get how many calories they're getting from dextrose. Where's my... We're having some technical difficulties today. I don't know where my eraser is. In any case, today we are going to be talking about fats and proteins. So the fat part of TPN is really simple because it comes in a little container about yay big and it's called intralipids. Now, if you remember back to one of my videos on propofol, we talked about calories uh, per milliliter of fat solution. So remember, a 10% fat solution has 1.1 kcal per milliliter. And a 20% fat solution has two kcals per milliliter. Now intralipids, this is a 20% fat solution. Whereas propofol, this propofol, propofol, propofol is a sedative used in critical care patients to keep them sedated while they're intubated. Propofol is a 1.1 or a kcal per milliliter or a 10% fat solution. Intralipids are a 20% fat solution. And this little intralipid bag is a standard 250 mil. 250 mil bag. Meaning each bag of intralipids has 500 kcals as fat. Cool. So we're, we're going to be referring to that later when we're actually doing full TPN calculations on patients. These videos on fats, carbs, and proteins for TPN are just the introduction to how to assign calories and stuff to them. But when we go and dive into an actual example patient, you'll see how all of this works together and how we figure out how much to give and how often. Cool. So we talked about dextrose, we talked about fat. Now, a few things to note on fat. There is something called SMOF lipids. SMOF. SMOF lipids. These are a specific type of lipids. They're more anti-inflammatory used for ICU specific patients. We don't have them here in this hospital. It's kind of a smaller hospital. It's not a real big hospital. We have 120 beds. We don't carry SMOF lipids here, but um, so I'm not going to comment on them. This is just going to be for your standard 20%, uh, 250 mil bag of intralipids. Now, um, an interesting fact. We had a patient the other day uh, who was on TPN who should not be getting lipids. They have uh, hypertriglyceridemia-induced pancreatitis. 
So they presented with pancreatitis where the presumed cause of the pancreatitis was elevated triglycerides in the setting of a new diabetic diagnosis and DKA. So in those patients, we're not going to give uh, intralipids. Uh, there's some other examples too, but I highly recommend that you get a hold of an Aspen book and you read about TPN and lipids, when to give them, when not to give them. I know a little bit about TPN, hence making these videos. I am not a TPN expert. I don't do home TPNs. I don't spend my whole day doing TPNs. So I'm going to stay in my comfort zone but if you want to learn more about when and when not to offer lipids to patients, I highly recommend you check out your Aspen guidelines. Um, the intralipids are important because they have essential fatty acids. And if patients go more than two weeks without lipids, they can get essential fatty acid deficiency. So that's why we use these in our patients. Um, there could be so for some folks, we give them every day. For other folks, we do it twice a week or every other day. So the reason that I like every other day is because one, there is such thing as uh, intralipid shortages. So there can be an, a national shortage of lipids. So in order to be judicious, with our use of lipids, I'm not going to give them every day to patients unless they absolutely need those extra calories. So for most people, I will order them uh, QOD. That is every other day. So Q is the um, how often, O is other, and D is day. QOD, I will order them every other day. That way they'll be getting approximately 250 lipid k cals per day on average so i order my lipids for most of my patients every other day we'll again talk about that more when we talk about clinamix which is the formula the dextrose uh, tpn formula that we use here so your intralipids are a 250 mil bag. It is a 20% lipid solution, meaning two kcals per mil, meaning 500 kcals per bag. And I order them every other day or approximately 250 kcals daily as lipids. Uh, there are some instances where you don't, um, you don't uh, offer them, but we do need them in our patients, especially for your long-term TPNers. If they're not taking either, if they don't have any uh, enteral nutrition or PO nutrition on board to meet their essential fatty acid needs. I'm gonna go ahead, erase this, and then we will talk about protein. So let's talk about protein. Protein is four kcals per gram. Now, there's two different ways that we can do TPN, or at least that I've done TPN, and that is compounding and clinomix. Clinomix. I think it's spelled that way. Don't hold me to it. It's just called clinomix. I don't know how many vowels are in it. So compounding is where you tell the pharmacist, hey, we need 50 grams of protein in this patient's TPN solution, 75 grams, 100 grams, so they can custom make it. Clinomix is these predetermined uh, one liter bags that come in two different concentrations for our TPN patients. The first one is a 520 bag and the other is a 515 bag. What this refers to is the first number is the percent amount of amino acids in the bag. And the second number, this 20, is the percent dextrose in the bag. So if you remember how we said, well, D5 or D20 is 20 grams of protein per 100 milliliters. This one liter bag, one, it's a one liter bag, is... 5% amino acids, 20% dextrose, or 5% amino acids, 15% dextrose. So the best way to explain this would be with an example. So let's say we have a 5, 
20 bag of TPN and we are going to run it at 45 mils per hour. This will provide over 24 hours 1080 mils of solution. Now you can take your 5% of this 5% amino acids gives you 54 grams. You just multiply that by 5%. So, uh, and then we can take your 20% of that and that gives you 216 grams of dextrose. Now remember, there's four calories per gram of protein. So that'll give us 216 kcals from protein and remember 3.4 kcals per gram for dextrose so 734 734 kcals from uh, dextrose I apologize and 260 kcals from uh, protein so we can add those two numbers up and we have 950 950 kcals. So we know that a 520 solution of Clinamix running at 45 mils an hour provides 54 grams of protein, 216 grams of dextrose, which equates to 950 kcals. This does not include the lipids. So you might be saying, Sean, that's very confusing. There's too much math. Um, am I going to be expected to do this with all my TPN patients? And the answer is no. You have this awesome little chart, uh, cheat sheet here, which lists out the solution, the rate, the amount of protein, dextrose, and calories at any given rate. And you actually work backwards. So I'll do another video here, an example video, where we actually work backwards. So here I can look and say, okay, 515 solution running at 75 mils an hour will provide 90 grams of protein, 270 grams of dextrose, uh, which is 1,278 kcals. So this gives you all the information that you might need. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to do another example video, and then we're going to go into example patients and do the math and show you how I figure out TPN calculations for my patients. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you like these videos, if you find them helpful, please subscribe and give me the thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Cheers.